Get somebody else to spot that shit. guys do in the morning to get fucking ramped up for the day it's always been music for me but it also heavily weighs on how i will act as influenced by like music attitude wise when i listen to like fuck you kind of rap shit and fucking out of control when i listen to like heavy metal I just, I don't know what it is, it just brings out the real me or the old me. I don't know which one to call it anymore. I do get quite reckless. If I'm listening to some good heavy metal, I get right reckless and I will just, well, I don't want to paint a picture for my fucking, someone to be like, this guy's reckless. Yes, I've said it many times before. Most good class one drivers are borderline reckless, barely holding their license, and willing to do anything. I'm not gonna run cops. Trust me, I would love to just give it a go, but <laughs> I don't have anything fast enough. Even though this car is fast, it's not that fucking fast. It will definitely outperform the car, and I will fucking, if we put me on a track with corners, I'll be long gone before the fucking cruiser. But, you know, they got radios and shit, and they'd be like, yeah, we got a guy that's trying to outrun us here. Deploy the spike strips. Get the helicopter. Vehicle immobilizer nowadays. They got all sorts of shit. Fuck. Technology. Man, I don't... It would be awesome to be a cop if I wasn't always worried about being fucking shot. Like, I wish I could just be a pursuit guy. Like, uh, um, Mad Max. Something like that shit. I'd be fucking all over that. Give me a sawed off and a fucking interceptor and I'm golden. Uh, somebody else pays for the fuel. Because I can't afford that shit. Hence why I'm driving. This is expensive to drive. I should be driving the fucking... The diesel, but the problem with the diesels is it's fucking uncomfortable. I hate the seats in that thing because it's just a straight base model where these ones are nice and uh, luxurious. Even uh, even my old car is way more comfortable than the, the 90 is way more comfortable than the 98. Why over my ass? Sounds good, I'm sure. 
hear from outside when I'm fucking banging gears. It sounds pretty good. I think it used to be way louder, if I remember correctly. There was one time I stopped in here and they were like putting a muffler or something on this because someone, someone got called in. I stopped here at Cypress to uh, pick some stuff up. Like visiting, you know. I always hate coming to somebody else's shop to pick something up. Because, you know, they store it in hopes that they'll get to haul it out. And then in comes another company to haul it out and you just store it for free. It's kind of how it is in the trucking world. I checked engine lights on again. Speed sensor. Um, wheel speed sensor and some ABS sensor. But last time, when I was out in the mountains there, and I was, I had to do some chewing because the cat couldn't pull, and we kind of spun out on the hill. And after that day, the check engine light came on, and I couldn't idle up the truck anymore. So it was stupid. I don't know how many wheel speed sets. Is it engine speed center or wheel speed center? I don't know, one of the two. Yesterday we did uh, C ring panels for New Wave and it was kind of soft and I fucking had the trailer like it was crusty on top, but if you punch through it was pretty soft. And by the time I sucked on panels and then I had to go around and grab the second one for a double suck, but they were one here, one there, and I broke through the crust trying to get to my last piece. By the time I sucked it on, I had like, I bladed like 15 feet back on the lease. And it was just a mess. And I had to drop the hammer and get her out of there. Something you would have never done if you had a, you know, if you didn't have that. You might have struggled, but I put that in number, number two and put her in Bolo and had her all locked up and got her out of there. But. Right as soon as I did that, then all of a sudden that came on. Then it, we got back, hot sunny all day yesterday. As soon as we got back here, one gray cloud, where is it? Right over top of this industrial park. And uh, it fucking poured. Yard number two, you seen in the last video there where I turned around that pipe fender, it's straight clay. It's fine if it's dry. Not fine when it's not dry.
gonna be max stretch. That'll leave me with probably, let's hope not too much overhand because you're only allowed three meters. From Pretty sure that's 6.5 over from the center axle. So I think I'm good. Just. Fucked. It's way over length. It's eight meters from the center axle to the back of the load. We're gonna need pilots. Hello?
secret I wanna stay like a sailor But I can't do that, no I can't do Hiccups today, there, there. Someone must have. They're like, how long is the bullet? 66 feet. Okay, it'll just fit perfect on the trombone. This is the case of ugh, fucking bugs. Summertime. Um, you ask a person, you're like, okay, well, what's the length of the unit? And they're just like, okay, well, the bullet's 66. There's like another six feet of skid on each end. This happens a lot in the stuff we haul. Like you get to haul a building, like say that compressor I did last week or whatever there. And it was like, yeah, it's 14 wide. Yeah, the building is 14 wide. We got the ease troughs, ESDs hanging off each end of the building. It is now 16 feet wide. So yeah, it's a case of, yeah, we got a propane bullet that needs to be hauled. And we're like, okay, what's the length? He says 66 feet. We're like, okay, well, we could get that on the trombone, no problem. And yeah, sometimes stuff like that gets overlooked, right? So I think it happens quite a bit. It's happened to me a lot. So yeah, we had to, so I'm like, got eight meters of overhang from, I use my whole 25 foot tape measure <laughs> from the center axle to the back of the load. I had to, I'm like, I've never had my tape out this far. It was brand new there. But yeah, eight meters from the center axle to the back of the load. So yeah, definitely needed pilot cars. And well, we got pilot cars. They showed up there just as we're almost ready to leave. So it worked out. It's just an added cost for the customer, but that's <laughs> what you get when you don't Someone didn't look. Someone overlooked that part, right? Like if they could have been on, say if they were really low, you could have got on trombone high boy. Well, then I could have had that extra more ahead, but you would have been over height. You would have needed a power company, but it would be kind of sketchy to do it on a high boy. There's no real uh, way to do it besides the way we're doing it. And if we had a longer trombone, well, <laughs> You would need a pilot anyway, just for length. But what am I, total of uh, 117 feet from bumper to the end of the load? The hardest parts will be, well, leaving location, which was fine, wasn't that bad. It was easy enough. And then I have no idea what it looks like where we're going, but I'm sure it'll be uh, another Another sweet entrance. It's in the industrial park of Panoka, I do believe, judging by the permitted route. So yeah, and uh, if I'm done early enough, which it should be, I'll be able to hit the truck wash. We got an account at, I think it's Poor Boys, or Prairie Boys, whatever it is there on the uh, south end of Panoka there on 2A, so we're gonna scoop out and get a nice car wash, got mud in my rim still from that compressor, and I'd like to get some of these bugs off. Been hauling a lot of ass, collecting bugs. To get those stacks cleaned up. Maybe to give them a little polish. But anyways, that's where we're at. And we got some chip seal, this will slow us down some more. Gotta make sure I'll take a pause on recording here, make sure everything's charged back up, because I killed 
both of my cameras loading because like I said I forgot how long it takes to do anything with a crane and it's, I got the cameras out I was recording I probably recorded 45 minutes of stuff I didn't need <laughs> just see the picker or the crane swinging around and doing his thing